what does this episode show? The self-proclaimed deal maker has failed again. Since taking office, Donald Trump has had a torrid time with deals. Be it North Korea, Iran or China, Donald Trump has had a lot to say but precious little to show. In Afghanistan, the U.S. put all its eggs in one basket and reaped the rewards for it. That basket is called Pakistan. I have plans on Afghanistan that if I wanted to win that war, Afghanistan would be wiped off the face of the earth. It would be gone. It would be over in literally in 10 days. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to go that route. So we're working with Pakistan and others to extricate ourselves, nor do we want to be policemen, because basically we're policemen right now. And we're not supposed to be policemen. We've been there. We've been there for 19 years in Afghanistan. Trump has learned a lesson that several other U.S. presidents before him have learned. Do not trust Pakistan in a peace process. As I said, it's an old mistake that the U.S. refuses to learn from. Pakistan has used this policy of bait and bleed to extract benefits from the U.S. I will tell you two stories tonight to establish this point. Story number one. Three decades ago, after the defeat of the Soviet army in Afghanistan, both the Soviet Union and the U.S. troops were withdrawn. Pakistan immediately meddled in Afghanistan's politics. Pakistan sided with jihadist Islamist elements. And all this while, Pakistan also projected close ties with the Americans. So on one hand, Pakistan sided with America. On the other hand, Pakistan fanned the anti-U.S. sentiment in the Taliban. The result was the 9-11 attacks in 2001. The point is, Pakistan does not want peace in Afghanistan. It doesn't suit them. Peace is just a trump card for Islamabad to extract more aid from the Americans. Now to story number two. The year was 2011. The U.S. intelligence tracked Al-Qaeda chief Osama bin Laden to a comfortable villa in Abbottabad in Pakistan. And this is the interesting bit. This complex was close to a Pakistan military base. In other words, Pakistan, which was an ally of America in the war on terror, was also harboring the biggest terrorist that America was looking for. Such are Pakistan's peace credentials. And yet, the U.S. continues to trust Islamabad with peace talks. It keeps happening. 1989, 2001, 2011, and now 2019, Pakistan has played the Americans again. So what should the Americans do now? We have some suggestions. First, de-link Afghanistan from domestic politics. Afghan lives cannot be fodder for American votes. The war has cost the U.S. nearly $1,000 billion since 2001. Any knee-jerk withdrawal will multiply this cost. The exit will have to be smooth. It will have to be gradual. Second, engage with the Afghan government, not with Pakistan. The challenge is the Islamist fundamentalists in the Taliban. They have Pakistan's support. And they will step up the violence, it seems. America must have a counter-strategy. After all, it's a mess of America's own making. And third, engage more with India. Though New Delhi considers the Taliban as a strategic power in Afghanistan now, India has not openly engaged with this group. India has always said terror and talks do not go together, and this holds true in every context. The Americans could learn from this. Today's Afghan crisis is the product of many bad decisions in America. When the Taliban were the weakest between 2006 and 2010, the U.S. should have seriously worked on pulling out and empowering the Afghan government. They did not do that. Now, the Taliban controls a large part of Afghanistan. It has a stronger presence, a stronger force. Plus, they have Pakistan's support, a terror state that the Americans keep trusting. Let me end this with an old saying from Albert Einstein. And this is for America's top, top strategists. If you do the same thing over and over again and expect different results, it is called insanity.